Hello everybody. Um, <clears throat> this video is for me and this video is to honor my mom and to explain a little bit of what happened and her life and all the above. Um, I just wanted to do this because I love her and I want to show you her and I want to talk about the good and I want to talk about some of the bad and um, I just want to just share a little bit of my life that you all didn't get to see because um, she didn't want to be on film and so that's fine I never was upset about it but um, it hasn't even been a week yet since she's passed and um, the grief is just it's unbearable like I've never felt this kind of pain in my body before I have it's hard to eat it's hard to sleep it's hard to to do anything like it's just going with the motions it's just awful like I I find grief is in a, in a wave kind of like I'll be okay and then I won't be okay and I'll be okay and then I'll be a disaster so it's interesting I didn't know this about grief this is this is the first person I've ever lost that's meant something to me and this is she's one of the most important people in my life she was my best friend I talked to her five ten times a day I've told her everything she was my rock every, there was nothing she didn't know about me she helped me raise my kids she got me through my deepest dark darkest depression with postpartum depression I don't know how I'm going to live life without her I'm still in shock I still don't believe it's actually happened even though I was with her at the end I still feel like it's a bad dream <laughs> and that someone's gonna wake me up and she'll be fine and this whole thing was just wrong that's not gonna happen is it yeah so I am here in my kitchen on the floor the kids are asleep I went through my mom's pictures today at my dad's house and I'm literally surrounded by hundreds of pictures let me show you I have pictures all over the floor that I just want to show you and talk about her and a little bit about my mom that she made me me she made me the woman I am she's an angel she's she's perfect to me and I'm just I struggle because of how she passed was so awful like it just like nobody nobody should have gone through what she went through and this this was her necklace that she wore a lot when I was a little girl and it's one of the first things I asked my dad if I could have because this this is symbolized mom like if I had to have anything in this world this if I have anything to pick from this is my mom and so I'm just so grateful he let me have it. So <clears throat> I have that. I'm very grateful. So yeah, so let me start with some pictures I wanted to show you. So this is my mom as a little girl. Um, I love these pictures. I don't know how I'll ever get rid of them. They're just, they're darling. She's dressed up for her, I think, church. She was just so cute with her little gloves and hat and dress. It's her at her birthday party when she, I think she was four or five years old. She is, she's right there. I just love that picture. Um, this is my mom at her first communion that I just love. I think it's so sweet. This picture is just adorable. This is with her th her siblings, um, my aunt and uncle, and their little kids, and they're sitting on the couch. Just my mom right here. I just love these pictures. This is just her spirit. You can see it in her. The joy she had. Um, just just so precious like I just this is her and her sister I just love these pictures I just these pictures are my mom she just had so much joy and so much kindness um she had a heart that was so big she would she felt so much her heart felt so much she just wore her heart in her sleeve you know she just was such a kind loving person um she, but she got hurt a lot because she wore her sleeve 
uh, for her heart on the outside of her body. So she got hurt a lot, but she was such a kind and loving person. She taught me to be that way. Always think of others, always be kind, and that's my mom. So I wanted to show you those. Um, uh, and then I wanted to show you, so this picture is a picture of my dad and my mom when they first met, I think right before they got married. They, they got, I think they, I think they met and then uh, six months later, I think they got married, I think, or a year later. I can't, I think a year later. That's my mom and my dad. I think she's beautiful. Just gorgeous couple, in my opinion. It just, so much, so beautiful. beautiful. Um, let me see if I can find another one. My mom was very um, crafty, artsy. She could draw, she could sew. She sewed all of my Halloween costumes. When I did theater, she made all of my theater costumes. She was a very creative person. And um, so I have some costumes she made. This is before my, me and my brother were born. She, she made these elf costumes for her and my dad for Halloween. I thought were so funny. And then she made, um, let me see this one I was I was kindergarten I was I dream a genie and um, cause I used to watch TV land with her when I was a little girl I was I dream a genie she made that whole thing even the hair piece she was very she was so talented with the sewing machine and her mind she could do anything with those things um, <clears throat> I'll show you another costume she made me this is I think I was in second grade yeah I was just I was a um, like a princess, a, a Victorian princess. I got to pick it out and everything, and she made it. And it was a, it was just so much fun. She was so talented. She actually had a business right after Harry Potter came out, like the books. She made Harry Potter wizard robes, and she made hundreds of them. I helped her. I I know how to sew, not as good as she does. She did, but um, we used to, I used to help her sew, and we made Harry Potter wizard robes, and she made hundreds and hundreds of them before like. Before Warner Brothers opened up, before like there was a company that made ropes, she made them and people bought them and it was it was amazing. Like she was very entrepreneurial. She just she was so talented. Um yeah, so I'm just gonna show you some more pictures. We don't have a lot of recent pictures. She really she's been sick for so long. Like not like sick, like really, really sick, but she started getting sick ten years ago and she, she didn't want her picture taken. Um, so I had like this picture of her when she was younger, like in her 20s. I just love that one. This picture is of me and my family when we went on a, we went on a train trip across America to New York State, New York City, and we got to see a play, and um, this was the day we were leaving. I was very scared. Um, I'm not gonna show my brother's face. He, I, don't, I didn't ask his permission to be in here, so I'm gonna cover his face. So, but um, that's us. And so the big glare, and we were going on an adventure, and I was very scared. So I was hiding my face under the coat. I didn't want to go. It was just I was my mom used to say, "Gotta be an adventure girl." I'm only gotta be an adventure girl. <laughs> so that's so I had to. <laughs> this picture is of me, and one of her favorite pictures of me when I was a little girl. Me and my babies. I think it was a sign. I have six kids, <laughs> and it was me sitting in a little baby bassinet with all of my babies. She loved this picture of me. That was really sweet. And then, okay, here's another costume she made. I was Belle in preschool. And it was just, yeah, it was good. There's not a ton, of, it's, it's really hard about this that my mom didn't get like to be photographed later in life. So there's not a lot of pictures of me with her and there's not a lot of pictures of me with her, her with the kids, the uh, grandkids. She just didn't want her picture taken. So is that, that's really hard. I don't have anything really present. The last photos I have of her is at our wedding and there's only a few. Um, yeah, so it's been really, really hard. Yeah, here's a couple more pictures of me um, with my mom a little bit. This is like when she had me, I was born C-section. So that's me. <laughs> I really don't have a ton with her, which is heartbreaking. Um, this is me just hanging out in the backyard. Yeah, I was like seven or eight. <laughs> um, this is when we were at my grandparents' house and I was going out in the snow. And this is the one I love. It's really... It's one of the only 
pics that I have with her and I'm like, I don't know, two? Other than my wedding. God. This is hurting me. I'm not okay. And I'm never gonna be okay. And everyone keeps asking me if I'm okay and I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm never, I'll never feel whole again. I feel like there's just a gaping spot in my body that's always gonna be empty. I, I love that woman so hard, so much. She was my everything. She taught me how to be, I mean, I was homeschooled, you guys. Like, I was with her all the time. There was never a question I didn't ask her. I felt so safe with her and everything fell apart. So I wanted to talk to you about what happened a little bit. Now I, I don't, it's a really huge story and it's really awful and I, I don't want to talk bad about my mom because I believe all of it was not, she could not help herself. Me and my dad have torn ourselves apart about why this had to happen like this and what happened and um I believe this is not this is there's no facts to this. I believe my mom had like a mental health issue at the end of her life like this last I don't know 10 years. Um I believe something went wrong in her brain that made her petrified of doctors, made her like because she got sick 10 years ago and which and she got she couldn't breathe but she refused to go to the doctor like refused and eventually when it got so bad she went and they gave her medicine and she wouldn't go to a specialist um she gave her they gave her medicine for her breathing and she ended up giving herself like self-medicating she found someone to give her medicine illegally I guess I don't know um I don't know how she did it but she did it and she got medicine without having to go to the doctor like a, and she self-medicated uh, I can't tell you how many times I begged her to go I can't tell you the arguments I got in with her my dad got with her um she was so afraid so adamant she could cure herself that there was nothing I could say like even, even when at the end, before she went to the hospital for the long time, she couldn't walk. She couldn't make it to the bathroom. She could do nothing and she still was saying, I don't need to go. Something just went wrong, so wrong. Even in the hospital, she fought the doctors she wouldn't do treatments. She thought she'd do better. And let me tell you, everything fell apart. Everything, like everything fell apart. Like, oh, she died the worst way in my opinion. So another backtrack, um, she thought she had sarcoidosis, which is a, a fungal and like, disease where you get from like the valley from California where we used to live and she thought she had that for years and that's what she used to say to everybody and she thought she googled it and she thought oh I, it's not curable I'm just gonna take this medicine that I get from God knows where and I'm gonna do this myself and we found out a couple days before she passed that she never had that ever she um she was a heavy smoker for most of her life and she, we found out that she had COPD, and um, and then we found out all the other things she had because they think, well, they think having a self medication, um, and they think not getting help, just not getting help. So, another backtrack: three or four years ago, she got sick, and they thought she had a perforated bowel, and one doctor said they think it could be fixed itself and with medication that would be enough and that they would, that would fix her. Secondly, um, another doctor came in and said, no, you have a perforated bowel, you need surgery. Well, what do you think she went with? 
the medicine route. She went the medicine route. She did not do the surgery, and she never went back to the doctor for follow up. Never did anything. Um, and she then she thought that that was like a moment of haha, I'm right. Doctors are wrong. They're all evil. Blah blah blah. And they said she says she adamantly believed that they were trying to kill her at that point. So that was really scary at that point, and. Um, I don't want to talk bad about her. I'm not talking bad about her. Know that this is not about, I'm not mad at her. I don't feel any anger towards her. I truly believe she couldn't help herself. And I tried everything. I, I tried everything. She just kept getting sicker and sicker and sicker. Where she couldn't walk, she couldn't get to the bathroom. At the hospital, her kidneys started failing. Because she couldn't move, she got blood clots in her lungs and her legs. They still believe, they said that they thought the perforated bowel could have been where she got that really bad infection from. They said she had a fungal infection through her whole body that they couldn't find out where it came from. They were thinking from there, but they couldn't find it. They couldn't find like how it started. Um, and then um, with the COPD was really bad. And then she had um, congenital heart failure too. And let me tell you, I don't know if she was protecting us or or if I was just hopeful. Like, even that morning of her death, that morning of the day she died, I believed that it was going to be okay. I believe that they found the blood clots and they were going to do medicine and that she was going to get rehab and then she was going to be back. Like, I had no idea that that would be the last day. What's really hard is that, like, I should have known. Like, I should have known. Everything was coming at us. Like, we knew that she was going to die. Like, she was so sick. Like, what were we thinking? Like, why did we even have a glimmer of hope? When they told me that she was on a ventilator in the ICU, I knew it was over. But it was like, I just remember the phone call. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that the last thing, the last thing I heard from her was that the nurses told her that, told me that she was refusing treatment and I got upset with her. And I said, you have to do this. You want to live. You have grandkids. You want to be around. Like, you want this. And she, she couldn't talk. I remember she was like, I could hear her breathing like, like in the background. And she, all the last thing she ever spoke to me was, I have, I have to let you go. And I just felt bad because I was upset. It's just because I wanted her around. It's just because I wanted her to be here and not be away. And then the next thing we know, they're calling us saying she's on the ventilator and that they're trying everything and she's on four different blood pressure medicines and that they can't get her stable enough to do dialysis because her kidneys are failing. And they said, luckily they called my dad and they said we could come see her and say goodbye. And let me tell you guys, it was almost five weeks since we saw her. She didn't look like herself. It was awful. She was all, whatever happened to her took everything good. Whatever was wrong took everything. Not one part of her looked like herself. She was swollen and just, I don't wish that on anybody, like ever, what I had to see. Like, at all. Like, it was just awful. I still can't get the imagery out of my head. Like, it's so bad. <laughs> I got to sing to her at the end before they disconnected everything, and she loved when I sang. And it was funny. It's like all the songs that she loved me to sing were goodbye songs. I thought it was so weird. Like, it was all I ask of you from Phantom of the Opera, where it's like, think of me, think of me fondly when we say goodbye. I was like, and I didn't realize it when I was singing it, and then I heard myself, and I was like, I was just bawling. 
and then there's somewhere over the rainbow and I was like oh my god and then there was um a song from Little Women where Beth is dying in and she sang Let Me Go, and that's one of her favorite songs of all time. And I thought it was really weird. And I sang them all, and we I held her hand. And it took about a half hour, and then she was gone. I just don't know how I'm going to live without her. I really don't. It's just gonna be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I just, I wish I had more pictures. I wish that the memories of the end weren't so bad. I want all the good ones to stay and the bad ones to go. I mean, I can say I had to find anything good she's not in pain anymore and let me tell you she was in a lot of pain so that's done you know I don't have to worry about her being in pain all the time I was in so much stress worrying that that's been nice not to worry like that my, my dad, like, they've been married, like, 37 years. He was her caregiver. Like, he's all he knew was her. Like, it's just been such a, it's just a shock. Like, it's been, like, our whole world just got shaken up. So I know that, um, there's not going to be a service. COVID-19. Don't even get me started. Um, <clears throat> We're just gonna, in a few days, have a little celebration of my mom. Just to have dinner together, my family and my dad. And we're just gonna talk about all the good memories. And try to get through this. Everything hurts. Oh yeah. <clears throat> My mom was the best woman. Whatever happened wasn't her fault. Yeah. I don't know how to end this, guys. I could show you every picture. This would be a three hour vlog. <laughs> oh, bear with me. I'm trying. I'm trying. All right, guys, thank you for watching. And as my mom would say, and everything on a good note. So don't forget guys, you guys are wonderful. And thank you for everything, you've been amazing. <sighs> See you next time.